the easy structure, essential pawn structures. Today we're going to start the masterclass of the E versus C pawn structure. It's a structure that is essential to learn because it comes in a lot of different openings. So uh, this will be a long series and it's uh, on the request of our so far only VIP member here at DM Talks. We hope others will join the program. It's, uh, and we know it's a little bit expensive. We are trying to finance that we can make more videos because of course it takes time from other uh, endeavors we, we do here at DM Talks. We're going to talk about this structure that can arise like from the French or the Carocan, the Maron and so on. Uh, um, it's it's something you will have with either white or black unless you play really weird openings uh, and it's also a structure that has not been covered very well in literature and uh, and that's also why i think i can coin it the easy structure i know that the c is not set that way in uh, in certain languages but i still think e c you get it structure is uh, is kind of cool um yeah. Okay. So let's let's look at it. This is uh, the the situation here. We have. Um, oops. I have to go into chess space to be able to do that. We have three pawns versus two pawns on the queen side, and then we have we we'll make that yellow those yellows. Four pawns versus three pawns on the king side. And uh, what does does that mean? Well. First of all, it means that uh, white has a majority on the queen side, and uh, in, if you look at Irv or someone like that, uh, they will say that that's a big advantage. Uh, I, I think modern theory is not not really sure about this. Anyway, we're gonna look at this. Uh, the The role of this e pawn thing it can be on different places. This pawn can also be on the c pawn for white can also be in different spots um, so we're gonna look at what to exchange what not to exchange how will the ending go how will the middle game go so it's gonna be a long series uh, because there are a lot of attacking ideas for both sides and there's a lot of uh, essential strategy to consider so when is the queen side majority dangerous when it's not dangerous when should white castle queen side when should he castle king side which pieces are good for which side we know that uh, whites usually have a white squared bishop that will sit on this square and attack down here and you can also somehow sense in the structure that white will start out in general with a lead in development so um and we're just gonna see a, a game where, where that is is telling um my overall thinking about the structure is that in the short run this structure tends to favor white but if black is to untangle or it's, it's it has untangled then black is better because having uh, four pawns against three here is much more interesting than three versus two. Uh, and, uh, and this e pawn can really mean something. It means that white ha black has a slight uh, spatial advantage. And that is sometimes a bigger advantage than most people think. So I would say that in the short run, white is better. In the long run, black might be better. But it's not always certain that black will get to the long run because white has a lot of different attacking potential. Then there's also which piece to keep, which to exchange, what happens in the D file and so on. But let's uh, let's start out by, by seeing a game. By the way, it's easy to become a member. And uh, like I said, uh, this one it was on the request of our so far only uh, VIP member here at DM Talks. Uh, and uh, and the, the idea is that people who are members, paying members, they get to have a big sh say in what will f be featured on the channel. Of course, we're going to keep on having the same things that we always have, but some things might be just for members, like uh, they will get early access to some videos and there might be some extra material in, the, in, for instance, in this series that will only be available for members. I'm sorry, but we'll have to 
make it a little bit of a business, not just only a hobby project. Uh, and by the way, thank you all for watching and supporting DM Talks. We are very grateful for the support and in, in general, very uh, positive uh, feedback we have we have gotten so far on on this chess channel. That is a lot of fun to to make. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into the game. Uh, we're not gonna. Uh, save this. We're gonna go to Jonas Bjerre versus Martin Haubo. And Haubo was the surprising winner of the Danish Championship, but uh, this game didn't go so well. And here we see the Sicilian. So this structure can also arrive from the Sicilian. Um, this is, of course, uh, uh, Haubo is trying to play real openings. He might play the dragon, he might play the classical, but he might also play the knight of without even knowing it very well, and uh, which is kind of uh, impressive against a guy like Jonas, who's, who's of course very well prepared. But Jonas also knows stuff, and here is the Moscow variation. And um, we can say this is could be a part of uh, our repertoire for here. He goes d4. C takes and knight takes, and that's that's very different from what we usually see in this um, in in this situation. It's normal for white to take back with the queen, uh, and here comes a very probably very surprising move: bishop d3. Hmm. <laughs> so white is essentially saying that putting the knight here is somewhat bad. Because uh, in, in, in normal Sicilian, you can also go uh, bishop d3 against knight f6 instead of knight c3. Uh, anyway, it looks kind of passive, also wasting a whole tempo and so on. And uh, the best move here for black should be, I guess, knight c5. Uh, we can just play it. This move is maybe attacking here, uh, but it's also attacking here. And... Uh, and in general, black should be fine in this position. It's hard to say that 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 white should be better. Why can you just spend a tempo like that, giving a check? Uh, usually, black is the knight of players. They want the knight on d7 anyway. Uh, but Haubo uh, was caught by surprise, and he plays a move that was not in my database. Uh, he plays e5, which is a typical knight of move, but it's not good in this situation because uh, white still have the option of going c4. Uh, and I probably uh, I think uh, Haubo got nervous about c4 here, so he panicked and played d5. Uh, and uh, now we have the structure only with the pawn here. By the way, there's something we will discuss. Uh, usually the pawn is, is here, but sometimes, for instance, with colors reverse in the English, it's here. Um, and it's, it's all a different kind of position. In general, this pawn, when it goes, if it goes too far, uh, too soon, then white will get outpost version. If, it, if it's, if it's in this square, then white will get this square as an, as a strong outpost. But it, it could sometimes, so sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Here it looks weird. It would have been nicer to have the pawn on the e6 square. Castle and white is ahead in development. And by the way, this is a very typical feature of uh, this structure is that in order to set this structure up for black, he usually have to accelerate white's development. It's the same in the French Taras, where white takes black takes on d5 with the queen, uh, and he has to spend some time with the queen, uh, moving to d6 and then to c7 to set up the structure. But uh, black uh, also in the Rubinstein, uh, black is also accelerating white's development in order to set up the structure that he believes and probably rightfully so is a good structure once set up. But the, the, the problem is, is getting to uh, and not being knocked out on the way to that. And that's, uh, that's in general uh, uh, the thing why black has to, to be wary of, that white can exercise a lot of pressure in uh, the D file and the E file. And, uh, and we can just see that from these pawns that they, they are free, that white can get all his pieces out really, really fast. So knight goes back, he's afraid of, of, of something. A rook here, bishop here, knight here, and white is now fully developed 
every pieces are out and uh, even a rook uh, is here and this position is not very pleasant for black for sure uh, but it's not a disaster yet and uh, and i think black should be able to somehow get his pieces out I would probably start with h6, just asking the bishop what to do. If he takes, I would say you have to take with the bishop, that's too bad, but still you're more or less okay. And the, the thing to remember with black in this, this kind of situation is if you can avoid any structural concessions you, you and you don't get made it, you're fine. But <laughs> that can be difficult. Uh, here, uh, Black tries to, to solve the, the problem of the pin and the pressure in the e-file uh, by tactical means. And White gets another piece out uh, really fast uh, and threatening mate in one move on h7. So you have to do something g6 and taking here is, is kind of nice. You can't take back with the queen because of knight takes d5. So this is is, is, is definitely bad uh, due to knight takes d5 and, and it's threatening the queen. So you have to take back with the knight. Knight here looks weird. And, uh, and of course, white has a lot of pressure here uh, still. Uh, and this bishop is usually the pride and joy of uh, white's position. And often black will try to exchange it. Uh, with the knight. Uh, in general, bishops are very good in this structure, but something we will uh, discuss in detail later on. Uh, queen h6, just developing, and here uh, comes a surprising decision, but it's also showing why white is, is probably already much better here, because instead of going for the attack, which is possible, you could play play queen here you can go here or you could go here uh, Jonas decides just to take here now the endings are in general uh, I think if, if white has uh, gotten this uh, majority here rolling then endings are often good for him if he has not gotten it rolling or there are only heavy pieces or it's not easy to get it going then black is usually better because this one uh, will give him a big space advantage later on uh, as this pawn lands here um, so it's the, it's interesting to play this way uh, for 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 white uh, because it's not very common. But Jonas has a, a, a good idea. He's, he's simply is saying, well, I'm gonna use my lead in development. Uh, Black's problem is this, and also that this one cannot get out. If it just was on this square, then Black would be fine. But it's not easy to get it to there, that square without losing something. And, and, and obviously, Haubo gotten the message that you should not make any concessions unless you have to. The problem is that uh, this move, uh, well, it's more or less losing because after this move, it will be un impossible to untangle. Uh, black is, uh, white is already threatening something like uh, this move. And in general, black's position is very, or this move, uh, uh, and black's position is very un unenjoyable. Uh, and after uh, and another uh, mistake uh, here, white can win in one move, uh, simply winning a piece or at least an, a pawn and an exchange. Uh, so can you, you can pause the video because I'm just going to show it now. Boom. Art. And, and when, well, of course, if you play the rook, you'll take here and the, the knight is threatening. The problem is this bishop down here is covering the knight. So, uh, and after something like this, uh, the double attack here is winning a piece. And uh, of course, on this level, that's easy enough to, to understand. So this was a very typical of example of black getting blown away in this structure which can happen, uh, but it does not always happen. And uh, it's a very important structure to, um, 
to understand. And the interesting thing is that there's not much theory. Uh, I think uh, Sokolov has a little bit, Irv has a little bit, and uh, and I think also Shirashevsky has a little bit, but it's not comprehensive. It's not like you say, ah, this is the key to this position. It's just more like, uh, okay, there, there's this is the idea and that there's this idea and so on. And what we will try to do with this masterclass, it will turn into a masterclass, is to make sort of a, a manual on how, what, what is important in this position and why, when to exchange knights, when to exchange bishops, who benefits if all the rooks disappear, who has the attacking chances in this situation and, and so on, uh, trying to create some rules. I don't have the rules yet. I, I'm expecting that we will learn as we go. Uh, there will be, of course, more games in the easy structure. I like that name. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna give me a benefit for that for, for that name. Uh, even though the, <laughs> the structure is is any anything but easy, uh, it's actually very complex and very interesting. Um, but it's a good name. Uh, this was DM Talks. Thank you for watching.